What's happening, everyone? I'm James Lynch. This is the Fanatics View Hockey Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys have any questions, post them in the chat. I'll get to every single one of them I can. We've got a lot of time here. We've got a lot to talk about. There's so much going on in the world of the NHL right now. So uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, before we get into everything, just make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Really does help out the channel a ton. And I uh, really uh, appreciate it a lot. Uh, we'll go the full hour today. I know I'm like a tiny bit late, but we'll definitely get in uh, everything you guys want to talk to. Um, today's theme is, is will the Detroit Red Wings make the playoffs? And the reason I bring this up is two reasons. Number one, that Eastern Conference, that eighth spot is really heating up. You've got Washington, who's been playing very well. You've got the Wings, who have not been playing so well. But the other thing is the Red Wings were a storied franchise. I mean, when I was growing up, the Red Wings always made the playoffs. Like there was some, they had some insane streak. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but the Wings would make the playoffs every Every year the last few years not so much but they've been told patience Steve Eiserman coming in and really trying to turn this into a winner by you know drafting and getting picks and doing all these different things that's why they traded Philip Aronik last year to get those draft picks so um you know they're, they're in sort of a, a bit of a rebuild phase but on the flip side this was a year they're supposed to take a step forward I think a lot of people expected the wings to make the playoffs and they still can make the playoffs but things are not looking so great if you're looking at the standings right now and we'll get into that in a little bit uh, of a second here but uh I, I think uh, the expectations especially especially after, you know, getting uh, DeBrincat in that trade. Um, it's it's definitely something where um, you expected the Wings to kind of take a step forward this year. So that's why we bring it up. We can talk about that. We can talk about whatever you guys want. we got a few uh, comments in here already. Hope the Red Wings make the playoffs. I'm on the fence because, you know what, if Washington makes it, you got the new coach. Everyone loves Ovechkin. You want to see Ovechkin uh, obviously hit that uh, mark, uh, Wayne Gretzky's mark as well. Um, so I'm kind of torn on this because, um, yeah, on the one hand, I was, you know, like I said, I grew up watching the Wings make the playoffs all the time. On the other hand, uh, you know, it, they, they, you do want to see them make a step forward. You don't want to see them have to make any drastic changes. Tons of close games last night. Colorado was a big disappointment. Yeah, we'll talk about uh, the games in a second. But like we always do on this channel, guys, let's go take a look at uh, what is on the Fanatics View channel as far as content. There's no post fight, post game stuff. Uh, up on the channel right now but there is some stuff from a few days ago you got post uh, game content from uh, the Canucks with their loss to LA we'll talk about that a little bit later um, you've obviously got some Dallas Stars content on here as well so a little bit of everything you see the Capitals there too uh, some post game interviews uh, as well so lots of stuff here on the channel make sure you guys go check this out and if you're not already subscribed please do that because it really does help out the channel a lot and also it's um, you know it there's just a lot of good unique content in here that you're not gonna find anywhere else so uh, that that's kind of where um, you can find all your hockey content here on the Fanatic View channel. Okay, let's take a look at last night's games. Uh, speaking of which, uh, we got my buddy uh, Ghost saying Rangers are playoff bound coming for that cut. Very tappy, tough game last night. Well, let's get into it. Let's talk about all the NHL games last night. Let's go through the list here. So you can mention, you can see it there. The Rangers coming out on top in overtime against the Flyers. This is a very, very uh, big game for the Rangers here. Check this out. The Rangers down 2-1 going into the third period. The Flyers then score a couple, and the Rangers score four goals in the in the third period. That is a sign of a team that is still hungry and still wanting to make some noise in the Eastern Conference. You got to like that. Four goals right there. Uh, as far as the Flyers, uh, Arison making uh, just 21 saves on 27 shots, so maybe not the best there. The Rangers on the flip side, Shosturkin. Um, making 36 saves on 41 shots. So not too bad there. Uh, the big news, obviously, Lafreniere getting two goals. Lafreniere, a guy last year, remember there was talks about him getting traded, uh, you know, what, what was going to happen. And uh, you know what? He's played pretty well this season uh, in terms of what he's been able to do. You see Trotchek, a uh, goal and an assist there as well. And Adam Fox with a goal and an assist too. Uh, that's two points on the night for him. So yeah, big win there for the Flyer or for the uh, Rangers, I should say, to kick things off. Let me get a sip of my coffee and we'll go through the rest of these. The other big game in the Eastern Conference, the Bruins and the Panthers. The Bruins yet again get it done in a very tight Eastern Conference at the top of the heap. You can see the Panthers there leading 2-1 after the first period. The Bruins getting two goals in the third period. Again, that's always a good sign. If you're seeing a team that is still performing well later in the game, often you see fatigue or you see teams kind of just pack it in. I can certainly relate to that as a Canucks fan. We certainly did that. Well, I won't say we packed it in, but... Um, against the Kings uh, the other night. Uh, they just, they couldn't do anything. I mean, the Kings really shut them down, but uh, good, good to see the Bruins get it done. Uh, McAvoy goal and an assist as far as the uh, shots. Uh, Jeremy Swayman, bit of a quiet night here. Just 21, uh, sorry, 18 saves on 21 shots. On the flip side, the Panthers, Bobrovsky also not facing a ton of shots um, either. So, you know, very, very uh, tight game here. Oliver Ekman Larson getting an assist. What is he up to this year, Ekman Larson? Um, I'm very curious uh, to see what his stats are this season because obviously the Canucks bought him out so he is at what is he at this year what's the total 
Uh, this year he is at 29, uh, I believe 29 points, right? Wow. You know, not bad. Nine goals, 20 assists. That's, that's very good. Um, but granted he's in a better situation in Florida. Like he's not the guy they're relying on like they were in Vancouver. So, uh, again, it worked out well for both teams. The Canucks obviously doing quite well this year and, uh, OEL doing quite well over there in Florida. But yeah, big one there for the Panthers. We'll talk about the standings in a sec. Let's go through the rest of these. There's a lot of games, so I'm not going to you know go in depth on every single one here. Uh, but if you look at it there, the Capitals beating the Red Wings. Again, big game in the Eastern Conference because both these teams are fighting for playoff spots. It is the Capitals who get it done. The Wings do get a point, but the Capitals getting those most important two points. This was a shocker yesterday. I definitely thought the Hurricanes were going to go in there and take out the Penguins. The Penguins win 4-1, so the Penguins got a little bit more life than we think. Uh, Jake Getzel's return to Pittsburgh last night does not go as planned. Penguins win that 4-1, but they're still out of the playoffs. How about the Devils beating the Maple Leafs at home? Not a good look for Toronto. Every now and then, you know, there's a few top teams that every now and then they just, they, they falter against the, the sort of the lesser teams. Uh, the Leafs being one of them, the Oilers, we saw them lose to Buffalo and lose to, uh, who was it last week? There was another team in there where it's like, how did you lose? But uh, yeah, not too good there. Um, the Leafs, again, I always still wonder about their goaltending. Jake Allen has worked out well for them. Look at this, 45, uh, 45 shots, 42 saves. Very good for Jake Allen last night. Jesper Brett, uh, three assists. And the Leafs, uh, not a ton of stuff going on. Joseph Wall only making 19 saves on 24 shots. That's not going to get it done. Um, and then not not too many contributors here. Austin Matthews, uh, just the one goal last night. Not a ton going on out there outside of that. But yeah, big win there for the Devils. But I still think it's going to be too, too little too late for the Devils. Although technically they're still in the playoff hunt as well. Uh, what do we have? Let's get to some other uh, stuff in the stand. Whoops, on the uh, on the games yesterday. Let's quickly go through the rest of these. Uh, we got the Predators beating the Golden Knights. The Predators continuing to be red hot. I think they've got 17 points in their last. I think they've got a, a point in their last 17 games, which is just incredible. Big win in overtime. The Knights do get another point, though. They need all of the points they can get as they're battling for that eighth spot. Predators are just, yeah, they're, they're the hottest team in the league right now. We'll talk about them a little bit. The Oilers getting a big win over the Jets at home in overtime. Very good there for the Oilers. Uh, quick, actually, Zach Hyman, who scored in overtime. And we'll talk about him in a second because uh, there's a lot of controversy going on. I don't know if you guys want to talk. I mean, we might, we have, probably have time to talk about this. Uh, the Zach Hyman uh, controversy from yesterday. Uh, a journalist making a pretty, in my opinion, pretty ridiculous statement. Uh, Stuart Skinner making 22 saves last night. And on the flip side, Hellebuck being very busy, 38 uh, saves for 42 shots. So uh, the Oilers really putting it on the Jets last night uh, with the shot attempts. How about this? The Blackhawks beating the Flames was not a... Listen, the Flames are done, but come on, you got to beat Chicago. I know Chicago's at home, but the Flames losing to the Blackhawks, not very good. Uh, we always got to look at the shots on goal as well. Markstrom uh, making... Uh, 24 saves, whereas on the flip side, uh, Peter Morazic looking, I mean, who would bet that Peter Morazic is going to outduel Jacob Markstrom? Don't really expect that, but it's really the offense that's not getting it done here for the Flames. They end up losing that one. Another one we were, you referenced there earlier, the Avalanche losing to the Montreal Canadiens at home. What is going on here? Like, I get that some teams... Maybe you're taking a bit of a step back as the playoffs come around. You want guys to be healthy. Maybe no, put like, I don't know. I mean, I'll just look at the roster right now. I don't think there was any like big names for the Avalanche out last night. Like they still have their big guns, right? Um, actually, was oh, McKinnon not playing last night? Let me just look here. Or is he just invisible? Um, yeah, no, Mc, oh no, McKinnon was playing. He got a goal last night. So, so he's on there, but I'm just wondering like, is there anyone, uh, you know, that's absent? Because this is a little bit weird. They did have their backup in, Anuin, who I... I kind of forgot was even on this team. So uh, he only makes um, 24 saves in the effort. The Montreal Canadiens, uh, Sam Montembeau continuing to look great. Uh, you know, no, not missing Jake Allen at all because he's obviously been playing quite well for them. So yeah, big win there for the Canadians, but they're out of the picture right now. Uh, the Coyotes beating the Blue Jackets. Again, two teams battling for draft picks. The Kraken blanking the Ducks for nothing. Very encouraging. Kraken have a pretty disappointing season. The Stars beating the Sharks last night, pretty predictable there. I think they were like minus 400, so uh, the Stars getting it done. Did our guy, uh, who we love here on the channel, Stan Coven? No no points last night, but uh, obviously a lot of uh, talk about him uh, playing Vancouver. I think that's tomorrow night is the Stars playing the Canucks because Stan Coven from British Columbia. Uh, there was something on Twitter yesterday about, uh, I guess he paid for a bunch of his friends and family to come attend the game because uh, he was sort of thanking them for helping him get there. So that was really cool uh, to see from uh, Stan Coven. Really, really good guy. So we, we got to like that. Okay, so that's all the games from uh, yesterday. Uh, let's have a quick look at the standings right now. Uh, you can see here the Rangers uh, right now leading the league with 100 points, 72 games played. Um, so they have one game in hand on the Canucks. So the Canucks could tie that if they win their next game. So yeah, and then um, Canucks are fourth overall, but let's look at the actual uh, conference. Uh, so the Rangers, uh, one point lead over the Bruins. They also have a game in hand, so they're they're comfortably there right now. 
You get the Bruins in second place, Panthers in third, uh, Carolina in fourth with 97. So they're, uh, yeah, I guess Panthers are ahead because they have a game in hand, but they're they're almost tied there. The Leafs, um, 89 points. And then, yeah, you can see it rounding it out. Right now, the Capitals are in a playoff spot. The Wings are not, and the Capitals have a game in hand. So, yeah, Detroit and New Jersey got to pick it up here. Jersey has 73 games played. They're running out of time, too. And like we did last week, let's look at the of, some of the teams that are streaking and not doing so well. So if you look at it here over the last little bit, over the last 10, uh, the Panthers have actually not done so great. They're 4-5-1. and one. That's one to keep an eye on. The Leafs as well, 5-4-1, and one, not too good. The Flyers, 4-4-2. Four, four, uh, you know, probably going to want to get some more points there. And the Capitals, great time to get hot here. 7-3 and three overall. They look like they are going to make the playoffs, whereas the Wings, which is the, the topic of this is, 3-6-1. and one. They have not done so great. Their biggest issue right now is playing on the road. Look at this, 15-8 and eight on the road this season. Not so good. And I was looking at their schedule. It's not going to get any easier. they got a couple games against the, I think they're playing the, the Hurricanes, uh, the Panthers. So it's not looking good for Detroit to, to make it happen. And, um, you know, part of me was thinking, you know, is it the goaltending? Like, what's sort of been the issue here? I actually looked at Alex Lyon's numbers. They're pretty much league average, but he's, you know, again, the Detroit just not getting a lot of offense and I think what really hurt them was Dylan Larkin being out for as long as he or he was out for a little bit there that's certainly not helping the offense with him being out but yeah sort of your bubble teams right now if you look at the wild card right now um you can see there the uh, lightning capitals and the red wings all sort of battling here um the islanders and devils yeah the islanders are another team that again three six and one they've kind of faltered a bit so it's a bit of a race here i think the sabers pretty much the sabers onwards they're they're sort of out of the picture now let's take a look at the western conference if you see here uh right at the top is dallas although they have a game in hand on the canucks so they're in first place right now canucks in second abs in third right behind them by a point like look how tight this is i mean minus the oilers but you look at it here uh jets Avs, Canucks, all pretty close, especially these top three here. Um, Canucks and Avs and Jets only playing 72 games. The Oilers do have uh, two games in hand, three games in hand on Dallas, two games in hand on the Jets, Avalanche, and Canucks. So Oilers could be moving up the mark. But um, I was kind of uh, reading this the other day. I actually posted this in my Discord yesterday because uh, we do talk a little hockey there. Uh, what did I write here? Just so we uh, kind of know. Um yeah, the Oilers play five games in the final seven days of the season. Uh, they have a really busy schedule. They're probably going to get uh, like a two-day break before the playoff spot uh, starts. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Like the Oilers do have a pretty tough schedule going into the playoffs. So will that impact in the playoffs? We'll see. Uh, again, they win last night, but um, that's one thing to sort of keep an eye on. And yeah, like we said with the standings right now, the Knights uh, in eighth place, uh, they are six points up on the St. Louis Blues. So I think the Knights comfortably are going to be making the playoffs here. The Blues, not so much. Uh, they have you know the same amount of games and they're six points back. So Vegas would have to have a pretty epic collapse there. But the Knights playing the Canucks le next week, and I'm actually going to be going to that game. I'm really excited. Uh, so hopefully the Canucks can... Uh, you know, take it to the Knights. I definitely don't want to watch a losing game there. But yeah, you see some of the teams here that have faltered. St. Louis, Minnesota, Calgary, Seattle, uh, all fighting for, for uh, draft picks at this point as opposed to uh, the playoffs there. So yeah, some really interesting stuff. Let's look at some trends. Uh, the Stars, 8-2. and two, That's one of the big reasons. Canucks, 7-2-1. and one. People talk about the Canucks not playing so good, but I mean, 7-2-1 and one in their last 10 is not too bad. They did lose to the Kings, but the thing I like about the Canucks is that they are losing close games. Like, they lost 3-2 to the Kings. They're not getting blown out like 6-0 or, you know, having these games where they look like a meltdown. And the other thing we got to remember the Canucks, they're using Casey to Smith right now. I mean, the fact that they're even winning games and doing quite well with the Smith of this backup is very encouraging. No doubt if Demko is a net and he's healthy, they're probably winning a few more games than they are, but the Canucks are still doing okay, 7-2-1 and one like that. The Avs, though, 9-1, and one, they are definitely on the biggest uh, you know, hot streak right now in the West. The Jets have been faltering a little bit, 4-5-1. and one. You see the Oilers playing a little bit better, 5-3-2. and 8-0-2 and two for the Preds. Again, they have looked outstanding. The Kings are 7-3, and three, and the Knights are 6-3-1, and one, so they're doing okay. But uh, yeah, some of the teams there, the Calgary 3-7. and seven. Again, losing to the Blackhawks last night, not so good. And look at the Ducks, 1-8-1, and one, same thing with the Sharks, not looking so hot. So yeah, that's what's going on with the standings right now. Let's have a look at tomorrow night's games. Uh, again, I know we're still early in the show here. Uh, well, today's games, I should say. We just have two. We obviously have the Senators and the Sabres. Uh, again, two teams, you know, battling for draft picks at this point. I don't think the Sabres are going to make it. And you want to talk about disappointing teams this year. I think you have to put the Sabres on that list. You know, they were a team that has gone through, I don't know how many rebuilds. Um, they've, I, I don't think they've made the playoffs, I think since 2011. A lot of instability there with the with the franchise. Um, you know, they traded away Middlestat to get Bowen Byram. I really like that trade for them. I actually think that's going to age quite well for the team. But, uh, you know, Levi, not exactly living up to the hype, so to speak, in, as far as uh, between the pipes. We'll see what the Sabres can do. But, um, yeah, they, you know, 
at this point, you want to get higher draft picks, so it doesn't really matter about wins and losses there. And this could be a pre play, uh, playoff preview here. You have the Lightning and the Bruins. The Bruins, again, winning last night. Lightning getting a day off. We'll see if the Lightning can go and take it at home against the Bruins. Let's look ahead to tomorrow. And we'll also look ahead to the weekend as well, because this is a midweek show, so we do miss a lot of things as well. Um, actually, quickly, we'll get to these uh, question here. Leafs tomorrow in Capitals 60s. Here's hoping for him. Absolutely. The fact that Tampa got a wild card spot and not in the top two is wild to me in such a stacked team. Well, the thing with Tampa Bay, though, is they have underperformed a little bit. If you look at like the plus minus as well, they're not doing so great in that department either as far as like goals against and all that. Um, they're, they're still a good team, but they're not the threat they were a couple years ago. And like I mentioned, the thing with Tampa that's really hurt them is the cap. They've had to lose all these players over the years. Like you think of like Ryan McDonough and, um, you know, who's another, who's the guy that it's playing for uh, Anaheim now? Is it Kilhorn? I think, that they lost. So there's been a few guys that have sort of come and go. Uh, you know, picking up Duclair from San Jose was a nice pickup, but they still haven't really replaced a lot of those pieces. Uh, Matthew's going for 60. There you go. Uh, were you saying the Hy- uh, Hyman controversy? Yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll talk about this in a sec. Let me get through the rest of the games and we'll talk about the Zach Hyman thing. It's not anything Hyman did. It's this thing that this reporter said, which is completely silly. I talked about this in the Discord yesterday on my Discord uh, on um, Patreon as well. Um, okay, let's get to, into the games for tomorrow. So we mentioned it there. Capitals. Hey, what's up, Billy? Good, good to have you here, man. I uh, appreciate the support. Appreciate all you guys tuning in here again. I love the fact that I have a hockey show is just awesome to me. So the fact that I have anyone even watching is just super cool because, uh, you know, I'm an MMA guy, so it's nice to be able to talk about other things. But uh, yeah, tomorrow night, Leafs and Capitals again, big, big game there for Washington as they look to, you know, separate themselves from the wings in the Eastern Conference. The Leafs needing to bounce back after that tough loss against New Jersey. Uh, Blue Jackets and Penguins again, Penguins winning last night. You would expect them to beat the Blue Jackets again. You never know. Another battle for the basement here. Well, not basement. Senators are not going to be in the basement, but they're not a very good team. They're home against the Blackhawks. Blackhawks with some momentum beating Calgary the other night. You got the Canadians and the Flyers. Flyers, can they can they uh, you know get it done against the Canadians who just won a big game last night against Colorado? We'll see what happens there. Flyers also in the playoff mix. I mean, Flyers, I think, are comfortably in here, right? Flyers are 82 points, 73 games. Well, not necessarily, actually. You got some teams chomping at the bit, but... And they and they have seventy three games played, so that's going to be a tough thing. Um, so yeah, I take that back. Flyers very much needing to win this game here, right? If we're looking at that, um, and then uh, actually, yeah, we'll we'll talk about odds on tonight's games as well. But I'm I'm going to stick with uh, just the uh, tomorrow night. Islanders and Panthers again. Islanders needing to to win to save their playoff lives. Easier said than done against the Panthers. You get the Red Wings and the Hurricanes again. Big win there for Detroit. C- Carolina looking to bounce back from that loss to Pittsburgh. You got the Golden Knights and the Jets. Another good potential playoff matchup. Jets looking to bounce back. Knights looking to bounce back as well. Sharks and Wild, again, battle for the bottom. Flames and Blues. Blues needing a win for sure. Here's a good opportunity at home against a Calgary team. Very demoralized after losing last night. We'll see if the Blues can get it done. Rangers and Avalanche, potential cup final. We'll see. Um, good, good tilt there. Let's see if the Avalanche can bounce back. The Rangers are always dangerous, even on the road. I might actually look at the Rangers at their plus money here. They've been playing quite well. Kings and Oilers, again, another playoff preview. The Kings defense. It's not fun to watch. I'll be the first one to admit that game the other night against the Canucks, very boring, but they're getting it done. Can they, you know, the, the big question is, can this defense stifle an Oilers offense that looks great? You've got Hyman, you've got, um, you know, McDavid, you got Dreisaitl. Can they neutralize that? That's going to be the big question. Stars and Canucks, again, potential playoff matchup here. Can the Canucks bounce back? Stan Coven playing in his home province for the first time. That'll be fun. Um, you got Chris Tanev, the former Canuck, playing against his team too. So that should be cool. Um, yeah, really fun game. I actually wish I was going to that game tomorrow, but uh, got too much going on. Kraken and Ducks, again, battle for, for the bottom of the league. And then the Predators get a bit of a gimme here against the Coyotes. I'd be pretty shocked if the Predators lose to the Coyotes. If they're anything under 2-1, to one, well, sorry, if they're anything... Yeah, if they're anything under minus 250, bet the Predators. Like, I can't see a reason why they would lose here. It's the Coyotes. They're arguably one of the worst teams in the league, and we talked about losing streak. Anyways, let's talk about odds, as per usual, brought by Bodog. I still want my check, Bodog, and you can see I got the Bodog jersey here in the back, so hopefully they'll give me a little bit of uh, something for, for plugging them so much. Uh, so we mentioned the games tonight. Senators and Sabres here. You're getting the Sabres at minus 142. Senators plus 122. I probably would just stay away from this game. Maybe look at the over. Uh, again, two goaltending duos that aren't so hot. The over is only minus 108. Might might look at playing that. And then you got the Bruins and the Lightning. Lightning favored at minus 120. The Bruins at even money might be worth a stab. I know they did play last night, but Bruins are just, I mean, they're always a good bet. They always seem to come through. I might actually lay a bit on the Bruins tonight to beat the Lightning. 
uh, just because, again, you're getting them at even money, which is always a good thing. So, yeah, not much to say about tonight's games. Just two games on the docket and then things getting really busy uh, tomorrow night as well. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, do you think the Blues making the playoffs is done? They can still do it. I mean, mathematically, they're still in, right? If we're looking at the Western Conference right now, um, they basically need other teams to kind of falter here because unfortunately they played 72 games and they're 80 points or six points back of Vegas. Like there'd have to be some epic collapses. If I was a betting man, which I am, Billy, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I do not think the Blues will make the playoffs. Which, you know what? Understandable. They did um, they did fire their coach earlier in the year. They've had some obvious deficiencies. They had, um, you know, I mean, I don't think once the coach was fired and they had that, you know, really bad sort of skid, I don't think people expected them to make it. But they've certainly made it interesting here. Uh, over the last little bit. They got to work on that road record, though. Look at that, 17, 18, and 2. That's not going to get it done on the road. So the Blues, yeah, probably not going to make it, but old note, some hope, you know? I think they need 5, 10. There you go. Uh, I only got my brother-in-law, one friend of my girlfriend, dad, really talk hockey, so the stream is dedicated to hockey. It's huge for me. Well, I'm happy to do it. I listen to hockey 24-7. I was uh, I listen to it in the morning uh, when I go to the gym. There's a sports talk radio show we have here, and then same thing. Like, anytime I'm in the car, I always have sports talk radio on. They talk a lot of hockey here in Vancouver, which is great. That's like, honestly, if I could only ever listen to hockey, I'd be fine with that. Even in the off season. I just love it. I love everything about hockey, man. So much fun. So yeah, Blues probably not making the playoffs. Uh, let's look ahead to some of the games uh, later in the week. And uh, we'll kind of talk about that. Actually, we'll do all the games that we have leading up there. So Friday, just one game on the dock of the Devils and the Sabres. Again, big win there for the Devils. They, they need to get that to get those points. I mentioned the Red Wings tough schedule. They're playing the Panthers on Saturday. Not looking good for them. The Golden Knights kind of getting a gimme, gimme against the Minnesota Wild. I uh, got the Ducks and Oilers. Big, easy game there for the Oilers. If I'm the Oilers, play the backup. Play some of the you know the younger guys just to rest your big bodies. Again, Rangers getting a bit of a gimme against the Coyotes. Predators and Avalanche potential preview. Love that game. Senators and Jets. Uh, Jets again at home. That's probably an easy win for them. Uh, Jackets and Penguins. Again, Penguins are pretty much out of it. Maybe looking for more points. Flyers get a good opponent here in the Blackhawks. That should be a win for them. Uh, there, Islanders and Lightning. Um, yeah, pretty good tilt. Again, Islanders needing to get some some wins there. Hurricanes get a bit of an easy one against the Habs. Bruins playing the Capitals. That'll be a fun one. Leafs and Sabres, can they do it? And the Canucks are off. Interesting. Canucks are playing Sunday, uh, a afternoon game against the Ducks. Interesting. Before I believe they head on the road to play Vegas. So um, that's a game I probably would have taken my son to because uh, it's an afternoon game. But uh, I'll just enjoy that one uh, during the day on, on Sunday. That'll be nice. Hopefully it's a nice nice day out here and I'll uh, sit back and watch some hockey. And then, yeah, you can see next week some other uh, big games for these teams. Again, the Red Wings playing the Lightning. Like, it's not getting easy for the Red Wings. So to answer my own poll question, I don't think the Red Wings are going to make the playoffs. Like, I, I, unless something drastically changes here, they just have too tough of a schedule to make up any time. Even the Blues as well. Look at this. They're playing the Oilers. Blues are playing the Sharks here. That should be a win for them. Um, and then even going back to tonight, um, or tomorrow night, I should say, the Blues are playing the Flames. That should be a win for them, but the Flames are not completely uh, done, so to speak. So there we go. So yeah, a lot of games coming up here. We're about, what, I think four weeks away from the playoffs. Things are going to get very interesting. Actually, they just announced it. Uh, I saw yesterday on Twitter, Irfan Gafar, uh, mentioning that I believe the playoffs are going to start April 20th, so a week after UFC 300, which will be cool. So that that's awesome. Uh, what's up? Hey, John, good to see you, buddy. Always a pleasure having you on these streams. What's your underrated favorite thing about hockey? I think it's just the fact, I, th I think the most underrated thing about hockey that I think people don't understand is that it's actually really fun to watch. Like people don't get it if they're watching it at home. But I think if you actually go to a game, you'll, it, it is one of the best live sports, if not the best live sport to watch. Like I really enjoy watching live hockey, like any, any level too, like AHL junior hockey. Like it's just fun to be in an arena. I love that. Like even like going into the arena and like that smell of like the ice and like, you know, the, the concession stand and just like, I just love being in arenas. It's just, it's fun. Like I was at an arena this morning. My kids go to a sports camp. There's a, there's an arena uh, just right beside it. I actually walked in there because they took the ice out and I just wanted to see what it looked like. And just even the smell of the arena gets me excited. So I love it. What's up, Troy? Good to see you as well. My longtime supporter, Troy. I appreciate you uh, tuning into this, man. You got any questions, you let me know. That goes for all of you. You guys have any questions? We got lots of time. There's not a lot of people in this chat. So any hockey related questions, more than happy to answer them, even if they're like personal questions, like, you know, who my favorite player is or something like that. Like, I'm more than happy to answer whatever you guys want there. That, that That's super cool with me. Which was worse, McSlorley slashing Brashear or Bertuzzi assaulting Steve Moore? So... I'm a little bit, it's a bit of a touchy subject here in Vancouver talking about Todd Bertuzzi, right? Because um, the thing with Bertuzzi that I think people have to remember, I mean, for people who have no idea what we're talking about, I mean, Todd Bertuzzi essentially ended Steve Moore's career. Like, he didn't play a game after that. Bertuzzi hit Moore in the back. Then there was this big dog pile, and, and uh, Steve Moore fell there. Um, 
So listen, this may sound a little biased. I'm fine with that. But the McSorley one was worse because he actually like took his stick and intentionally hit Brashear. Bertuzzi was trying to get like more to like fight him basically and like more like turned his back and then Bertuzzi hit him. And then the, the, the thing that really messed up Moore's career was the dog pile after. Now I heard from other people. I mean, Brad Mays talked about this publicly. Brad May, former Canuck. He mentioned that Moore probably could have played again. You know, it was a lot of, you know, I need to get some money for this because he listen. Moore was a career fourth liner. He was not ever going to be anything special. He's never going to make like a bunch of big money or anything. So his shot at making a bunch of money was this lawsuit from Bertuzzi and Bertuzzi paid the price. I mean, he did. He was never the same after that whole incident. Went to Florida, went to Detroit. Um, yeah, just was never the same after that. And uh, the thing that I always look at with Bertuzzi is like this guy did not have a history of being a dirty player. So that whole thing was unfortunate. I feel like the league didn't do, you know, the Canucks any favors with that. They talked briefly about it. They did a documentary series on the West Coast Express, which was the Canucks team that had Marcus Naslin, Brendan Morrison, and um, uh, Todd Bertuzzi on the team. And uh, they talked a bit about that whole situation. That was a really... Canucks have had a weird run as the, in their franchise. But yeah, I'm going to go McSorley there. By the way, if you guys want, if anyone knows who this even is, I do have access to Brendan Morrison, the former Canucks player. I've interviewed him before. I know a guy that produces a TV show for him. I'm thinking about getting him on here in the next little bit. Uh, he's also an MMA fan, so maybe we could talk a little bit of that too. But uh, I do want to get Brendan on this show at some point. I will be getting more guests on. It's just I've been so busy that I haven't had a chance to like plan anything. But there will be guests on here in the future. We had Stephen Ellis on a few weeks ago, but trying to do that a little bit more. Kind of random, but I met Chris Pronger not too long ago. He's a big dude. was way taller than me. Chris Pronger was a scary dude, man. Like, he's, yeah, he was arguably one of the best defensemen in the era that I was watching hockey growing up. Like, he was very, very, very good. You think of the Cups he won. Think about even, you know, back when he played for the Blues. He was like a staple for them. Then with Edmonton. Then with Anaheim. The guy was scary, man. Chris Pronger's great. Met Timo Solani in his rookie year. My dad hooked me up. That's awesome. I've never met him. So I've met a few players in my time. I'll mention this quickly. Just, you know, again, uh, talk about some different stuff here. Um, so I met, uh, I was up in Whistler one time uh, with my family and we were doing ATVing and in the ATV group behind me was Ed Jovanovsky, Donald Brashear and Todd Bertuzzi. I got a picture with them. Unfortunately, it was dark in there. So the picture looks really like dark, but I was able to scan the photo and I lightened it up a little bit. Not the greatest picture of me, but uh, I, I got a picture with them. I also met Dominic Hasek years ago when the All-Star game was here. That My dad somehow got tickets to like this, I don't know, this like after party thing. That I guess was like all ages. So I met, I, I shook Dominic Hasek's hand. That was like one of the greatest moments of my life. That was really cool. Who else have I met as far as hockey players? Brad May. I met him at a Nando's Chicken one time in Richmond. Um, we were just, my family and I were eating and I saw him and I just was like, hey man, like big fan, like all this stuff. I've, met, I've seen Brian Burke at the airport a few times. Um, just, I don't know, randomly. Who else? Travis Green was on one of my flights one time, the former Canucks coach. He now coaches the Devils. I grew up playing hockey with Brent Seabrook or Brent Seabrook was in one of my uh, hockey camps when I was growing up. Who are some others? I, I know there's more. Like, I've actually met a lot of hockey players in my time. Dakota Joshua, who plays for the Canucks. When I went to see the Canucks play in Vegas last time, I saw this, like, pretty tall guy walking down the street, like, just on the strip. And I'm like, he looks familiar. And then I, as I got closer, I realized it was Dakota Joshua. But it didn't stop him. It looked like he was in a hurry wherever he was going. Uh, who else? Hockey players that I've met. I think those are those are just some of them that, that are off the top of my head. Um, also, Jeff Skinner, I've met him before. My One of my good friends, actually the guy I'm going to the game with next week, he, he's really good friends with Jeff Skinner's sister. And so we ended up getting tickets through uh, Jeff Skinner a couple of years ago. And he ended up meeting us up, up with us after the game. Really nice guy there. The Blues Duck game last weekend was so much fun that it is first game I've been to. Oh, live hockey is so good, man. Like, there's really nothing better than that, in my opinion. It's awesome. Are you starting to get the feeling that fighting is becoming more popular again? I love for I for one love the fighting in hockey and feel like the tide is turning. I hope so, man. Um, in today's climate, I know they're trying to get rid of it. I think there's I, I think I think it's necessary as long as you're taking the right precautions, you know, like the ref stepping in at the right time. Players, you know, if, if you get knocked down in a fight, take take some time off. Like, I don't want to see fighting go away because I think the physicality part of hockey is why people like it. Like, I don't want this to turn into something. And it's not like an epidemic, you know, like in football, you know, when the quarterbacks are getting sacked and all that, like that's something where I could see people being like, okay, that's not good for business. But as far as like fighting and hitting and all that, like you're not really seeing star players getting taken out of the NHL. So the guys that are fighting are not guys that are like your top players. So I'm for it. I'm a bit more old school. Um, I, I prefer to, to see it stay in. And I, I just, you know, I like hockey the way it is. I don't want it to change. I 100% believe it's the best live sport because I've seen two live MMAs just didn't hit like hockey does. Basically, no bad seats for hockey. I agree. And I think with MMA, oftentimes, it's not the best viewing experience because of the cage. You're often looking up at the monitor. I think with hockey, 
you can pretty much see everything. Um, you know, you got the red light if a goal goes off. Like, there's nothing better than your home team or team that you're cheering for scoring a goal and the crowd goes nuts. Like, that's that's so cool. Like, it's I know in basketball you kind of get the same thing when it's like fourth quarter and like someone's draining a three or something. That's cool. I know in football a touchdown's kind of similar to that, but I don't know, man. Hockey, like you just getting seeing goals and goals. It's just like it's uh, it's awesome. And you know what part of it is too, guys. It's I think you got to play hockey to understand it too. Like I grew up playing hockey. And like scoring a goal in hockey is the most satisfying thing I've ever done in sports. Like more satisfying than like, like hitting a good shot in golf, more satisfying than hitting, you know, a three pointer in basketball. Like to me, getting a goal in hockey is just so much more exhilarating. What percentage of goalie success uh, is the team's front in front of them? What percentage of their success is actual skill? I feel like there are many skilled goalies that are facing too many shots. That's a great point. Um, I think you have to look at teams that aren't very offensively like here, here, here's a good example. Like we can even look at the standings to kind of figure this out here. So like the goal differential, right? Like you look at Washington, if they make the playoffs, they're going to have historically one of the worst goal differentials. Look at this minus 26. So basically what that means is like Washington's not like they're mind you, they're not, they don't have amazing goaltending, but they're also not generating a lot of goals either. Right? So um, that that's something. Yeah, I think I think certain teams are like that. Like back in the 90s, you had it was more prevalent to have like goalies that would just steal the show. Like I remember for the Leafs in the 90s, like Curtis Joseph was basically the reason the Leafs made the playoffs every year. They didn't have like super strong team, but they had a team that could backstop them. Um, you look at like and then on the flip side, you had like Chris Osgood, who I didn't think was like that amazing of a goalie growing up. But the Red Wings were so offensively sound and so defensively sound as well that they were able to, you know, win cups with with, you know, decent goaltending. So I think it depends. You know, New Jersey Devils, Martin Brodeur, one of the best goaltenders of all time. They were able to win cups in part because of Brodeur. Dominic Hasek, you know, these are teams that, you know, really relied on their goaltending. I think now it's not so much. Like, look, Aiden Hill won a Stanley Cup last year with Vegas. Like, I don't think he's a Vesna candidate goaltender. Um, so I, I think it, you just, it's like a team-by-team -team basis. Like, I think, I think honestly, the Oilers is a good example of two goalies that I think if, for example, Stuart Skinner and... Uh, Calvin Pickard were on Buffalo. I don't think they, I, I think they struggle mightily. I don't think they're as good as the team in front of them. I think the Oilers have pretty good defense, yeah, decent defense. I mean, Evan Bouchard is, I'm, I don't think he's that great, to be honest. Um, I think Darnell Nurse is overpaid, but um, I think, yeah, there's certain teams you can point at. Like the Canucks, I think they're, I, I, I think they're well-rounded enough that like you can see a Casey DeSmith who I, you know, I, I, I think it's debatable if he's an actual starter. Like he's played quite well as a backup, but like, I don't know if he could actually be a starter again in the league. I think that's, you know, I think that's debatable. Like, would he be any different on say like a Montreal or like a different team that is maybe not as, as defend? Like, I, I think you just have to look at certain teams and you know, you can kind of get the evidence, like I said, with the goal differential here. Like, for example, look at the blue jackets minus 59. Like that's insane. San Jose minus 133. Like that is not a typo. That's 133 goal differential. Like, and, and that's the thing. Like, Mackenzie Blackwood is actually a decent goaltender. It's just he's on, like, a really, really, really bad team. So that, that that's kind of what it boils down to. Slacked off hockey. Haven't watched or paid attention in two or three weeks. Just too many different things to keep up with. Going to make an effort to get back in before the playoffs. It's all good. I mean, again, it's probably not the worst time to be missing hockey because, A, the playoffs are so exciting, and, B, teams are kind of fixing their, their positions as well. Funny enough, Pronger was hanging out with Michael Chandler when I met him. Really? I wonder what the connection is there. You know, Pronger does have ties. There's a regional promotion in Missouri called um, Shamrock FC. And I know Pronger's attended a couple of them. And I think one time he was going to do commentary or do something with them. Because um, I know Jesse Finney who runs the runs the promotion there. And he mentioned something about Pronger. Because I actually might actually uh, hit up Jesse and see if I can get Pronger on the show. That, that, Billy, I'll, I'll make it happen. I'll, I'll, see if, I'll see if I can get Chris Pronger in here. I would love to talk to him. Actually, another NHLer that follows me on, uh, on Twitter is Chris Terrian. He used to play for the Flyers. I interviewed him because they did this like ice hockey fighting thing uh, last year, a couple years ago. And uh, he's, he's a really good get too. I remember having Chris's, Chris's hockey card growing up. Josh Bailey went to my camp when I was a kid and got an autograph from him. Oh, that's cool. Best goaltender in Vancouver Canucks history. I mean, it's got to be Luongo. It is. Here's the thing with Luongo that annoys me about the Lu Luongo supporters because there's this big debate about if number one should be retired because Kirk McLean also had number one and Kirk McLean backstopped the Canucks to a final. Now, overall, Luongo is the better goalie. Kirk McLean, if you look at his overall stats, is not as good as Luongo. However, Luongo did not play that well. Like, even in the, in the 2011 finals, like, he didn't play, like, I don't think... I hate to say this, but like there were games when he did not play well. And I feel like he does not get enough criticism for that because I feel like the pro Luongo people are like, you can't even question any of the, the bad games he played. Like I remember those games against Chicago and he had a couple really, really bad goals, a couple meltdown games. Like go look at the scores in some of those 2011, uh, you know, playoff runs. And even before that, he did not play so well. So 
It has to be Luongo just based off the overall stats. I think Thatcher Demko can surpass him. I really feel that way. Like I think, and, and this is just eye test, okay? Like just looking at Demko, I think he is the better goalie, but he needs to prove that. He needs to obviously have success in the playoffs. He has to, you know, elevate this team, but I think he can do it. And I think we saw glimpses of that a couple years ago in the bubble when the Canucks played Vegas. Remember that? You remember that series he played as a rookie? He looked amazing. And He's, you know, there, there's so I can count so many games this year where Demko is like really bailed out the Canucks like he's just played outstanding. And if it weren't for Connor Hellebuck, he'd probably win the Vezina this year. You know, I think Hellebuck will get it just because he's been a little bit more prevalent and he's obviously playing right now. He's healthy. Um, and, and, you know, I just feel like Americans get. Well, I mean, I guess Demko's American as well, but I, I feel like they get a little bit more shine with that stuff. So, yeah, it's got to be Luongo, but I'm not as big of a Luongo guy as other people are. You know, I'll just say that. Did you see the player from North? Oh, by the way, good to hear from you, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, looking forward to playing golf again with you on Sunday. Always good to hear from you, buddy. And a uh, happy early birthday. Uh, did you see the player from North Dakota that got rocked by the referee after he scored a goal? It was Midwest Regional Final. So funny, just drilled. Um, let me see. North Dakota. North Dakota referee goal. Ref takes out North Dakota player after goal. This is a couple of years ago, Jer. I'm just seeing something on YouTube here. Um, I don't know if this is what you're referring to. Let's see. Hopefully we don't get booted off YouTube. I don't think we will. Is he even going to let me play this? Let's see. No audio. That'll save us here. Is this the one you're talking about? This is from 2019. Or is this something different? Or where he gets taken out by the ref? Or are you talking about something else? This does look kind of old. By the way, Troy Stetcher on there too. Oh, that's it. Okay, good. There we go. So I know what I'm doing. Uh, Billy, want to join up in our playoff pool? Yeah, join the playoff pool. Actually, yeah, Jeremy, if you want to join our playoff pool as well, I'll see if I can get you an invite as well. I have a Discord, but um, I'll uh, maybe we can get you in there. Just just uh, send me a text. New to hockey. We're all doing teams only, not players, so it's a bit easier. There we go. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, we're doing a playoff pool in, uh, in hockey. Okay, let's get to this. I wanted to address this. I don't even want to give this guy any credit, but... Uh, Little bit of little bit of backstory here. So this caught a lot of attention yesterday. This journalist, Andrew Berkshire. And this went viral yesterday. 5.6 million views on um on Twitter yesterday. And it was everywhere. And this guy got completely cooked. Look at the ratio here. Uh 3,000 replies, 1,000 quote tweets, and a lot of them are not good. Okay, so basically the story here is he does a video on Zach Hyman, and a lot of people Zach Hyman's been an incredible story. Okay, so for those who don't know about Zach Hyman. Um, drafted by Florida, I believe. Rights were traded to Toronto, played with Toronto, did very well, ended up leaving Toronto in the offseason, played with the Oilers. Early on, the contract wasn't looking so hot. They did sign him to a decent contract, but Zach Hyman, who is not really thought of to be like a first-line player or anything like special, ends up getting 50 goals this year. It's kind of an interesting story because if you look at Hyman's career, we'll just look at this quickly. Um, Zach Hyman, yeah, like I said, taken 123rd overall by the Panthers. So, like, when a guy, just so you guys know, if you're, any of you guys are new to hockey, like, a player that's drafted this late really does not usually pan out, like, at all. Like, we're, like, not even, like, I'm even talking as, like, not even, like, a regular NHLer. So, not only has he done that, but he's one of the top players this year. Um, and granted, he's playing with McDavid and, and Dreisaitl, but, I mean, it's still pretty incredible, like, the fact that he signs this contract that, at the time, people were, like, maybe a bit of an overpay, but now it looks like a complete steal. Like, people are even saying, this might be one of the best bargain contracts in NHL history. I gotta remember the exact uh, money here, but Zach Hyman uh, signs with uh, Edmonton. So let's look at the, the contract here. Uh, why are they giving me a Gemini sign? Um, oh yeah, Oilers signed Zach uh, Hyman to a seven-year contract. So at the time, they gave him... Um, AAV of 5.5 million, which for any player like that's, that's, you know, that, that, that's a little bit overpaid for like a third line guy, second line center. That's probably right in par, but like, again, they weren't expecting that much from Hyman. Hyman's more of like a, like a grinder guy. He's fast. And but anyways, long story short is he has this great season this year where he gets 50 goals and granted, you know, the Oilers are playing well too, but it's a cool story. Cause again, if you look at where Hyman started, being 123rd overall pick by the Panthers, it's pretty crazy that he's a 50 goal goal, goal scorer. Like a 50 goal scorer is usually like a first round pick, like a like a top 10 pick or something. Someone like that is usually going to hit that. Anyways, the reason I'm setting all this up, this adds to what Andrew says yesterday on Twitter. So I'm going to read what he says here, and then I'll kind of 
give what I think he was trying to say in this video. It says, in the media, we have a responsibility to tell stories, but too often they're just not honest. The narrative around Zach Myman's first 50 goal season, for example, erases the real reason it was possible. It just wasn't hard work. Follow me on TikTok for more, which I don't think anyone will after today. So basically what he says in this video, we're not going to watch the full four minutes. He basically says that Zach Hyman was a kid who grew up with basically rich parents, that he had every opportunity to succeed on the way up. And, um, and that like the only reason, like he's basically saying that like everyone works hard. And the reason that Hyman is able to break through all these years later is because of all the good opportunities he's got. And it wasn't hard work. So he's basically, he's not like, I think people got confused by this. Um, cause this is how I took it as well. He's not going after Zach Hyman specifically. I don't think anyways, he's going after the media for making these stories, which have come out recently. And I think they're completely valid that like, look, you, if you just stick with it, you can achieve great things, which in Hyman's case he has, because it took him so long to get to 50 goals, but no one expect him to get to 50 goals. Again, he's a low draft pick right? Like he's not expected to get even, you know, 20 goals probably. Right. So this is like a really cool story, but what Andrew's upset with is the media saying that it's because of the hard work and sticking with it. Andrew's trying to blame this on like an economical thing that he had rich parents, which is a huge reach. Now, a little bit of backstory here on Andrew as well. Cause I've seen him post stuff before. I don't follow him as you can see. Um, he's kind of a little bit politically radical. We'll put it that way. So you got to keep that. You got to keep that in mind that that's the lens he's going through. He's one of these people that, you know, wants the rich to give all their money to the poor, that type of narrative. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to get too political here. This is not what the show's about, but that's the lens of which he's looking through this. So it kind of, it's kind of a bad look because like, he's not blaming Hyman per se. He's blaming the media. But the thing is like, it's the reason he had a good upbringing is not the reason that he got 50 goals. I think most like pretty much everyone knows that. And we'll, we'll read some of the replies here because there's some pretty like big name people who chimed in on this who are like very intelligent when it comes to hockey. But like he's basically saying that, of course, Zach Hyman was going to break through 50 goals at some point because he had rich parents. That's basically what he was implying. But the, the truth of the matter is, yes, a lot of hockey players have. I mean, it's an expensive sport to play like. I know this firsthand. Like I can tell you guys that I paid a lot for my son to play his first year of hockey. It's not cheap adding the equipment, everything else. It does add up. It's not a sport for poor people for sure. But the thing is there's so many cases like this and like Andrew's attributing all of it to Zach Hyman, uh, having these opportunities as to why he's so good. Like what Andrew is failing to realize here is that like you can have, you can be born with talent and you can work hard and it still cannot be enough. Like that's what he doesn't get. Like it's, it's about the perseverance. Like, a lot of Zach Hyman's that are in his position that were drafts, drafted so lower may work hard and, you know, may have a bit of talent, but they may never get there because there, there has to be a lot of things that happen. Now, he also points out in the video, and this is absolutely true, is that Hyman has been a beneficiary of good line mates. In Toronto, he had Austin Matthews to play with, who's one of the best players in the league. In Edmonton, he has the chance to play with Connor McDavid. That certainly has contributed to it. That has nothing to do with his rich upbringing. That's like Andrew's almost letting his personal vendetta against the work, like, you know, the whole economic system in, in North America. He's letting that blind the fact that Zach Hyman actually got here because of determination. Anyways, not going to give this much more oxygen. You guys read the replies here. They're hilarious. I've been reading them all day here. Uh, Frank Zara Valley, for example, who's, oh yeah. So here's Andrew Raycroft, former goaltender, who also uh, does some work for Bodog saying no more media meals for this guy in the NHL. Can't say anything more ridiculous. Frank Saravelli, one of the most respected journalists, like to put this in MMA terms, Frank Saravelli is basically like the Ariel Hawani of the industry. Like he's like the guy when it comes to like insider news, like he's right up there. The commentary and vitriol directed at Oilers Zach Hyman after achieving an incredible 50 goal milestone is nothing short of disgraceful. Hate to give it any more oxygen, but this take is hot garbage and a lame attack on hockey media who show up to the rink every day. So Frank does understand this because he understands that Andrew is attacking the media, not attacking Zach Hyman. But if Frank Saravalli is saying this, then you know you effed up because Frank Saravalli is one of, like I said, the most respected guys in the sport right now. And for him to even comment on this just shows you how much this has touched a nerve here. So and we should mention as well, Andrew's out of work. He was working for Steve Dangle's network. He was let go, uh, which is, you know, I hate to rag on anyone getting getting laid off or anything like that, but he basically went on this big thing about how, oh, I didn't know that it was performance-based. Uh, if I would have known that, I would have done things differently. It's like, dude, if you work for a company and you're not, view the views are not going very well, which in his case was YouTube, if the views aren't going well, of course you're going to get let go or people are not going to be happy about that. For him to think that like it was not performance based is just hilarious. So he doesn't know how to run a business either. But um, but yeah, so there's again, all these things tie together. His political views, um, the fact that he's not working like full time for a hockey outlet. I'm sure all these things contributed to him making this video. But yeah, just very not well thought of. Again, the replies here get more and more. Just everyone dragging him down. Uh, Tim Peel, the former referee, going after him as well. Ryan Whitney of uh, obviously the Spent and Chicklets podcast going after him as well. Gabe Morenci, Gabe, guy I've known for years, respect really well, Mr. Sports Rage himself. Um, yeah, 
Uh, this is the typical Canadian male. I would be in the NHL if not for politics or bad knee injury. Walk into a bar. That's the story you get. He's right about that. Uh, who else? Let's just get one more here. I'm not going to totally drag this guy down, but we'll find someone else. Um, um, Chris Johnson, another very well-respected guy, a guy who was also a colleague of Andrew's back at, uh, at Steve Dangle's network, uh, who used to work with Andrew, has actually come out against Andrew here. He says, encouraged to see how many commentators are coming to Zach Hyman's defense here. Any attempt to diminish his accomplishment or undeniable amount of work that went into it because of his family wealth is truly missing the forest of the trees. So Chris Johnson, again, who used to work with Andrew, is even coming after him here too. So anyways, just pointing this out because this was big news. I got 5 million views yesterday on Twitter. Uh, this is the type of stuff that just drives me nuts. Like, look, everyone's, I mean, this is something I'll probably lead into my next podcast, which I'm doing in about uh, 13 minutes, the Lynch on Life podcast. But look, everyone's going to have bad breaks in life. Everyone's going to have good breaks. There's going to be people that are luckier than you or better than you. They're, they're, that's how life is. Life's not fair. It really isn't. I mean, you could look at things that life is fair to some people. It's not fair to others. But like to diminish what Zach's done or to, or to even go after the media saying that hard work is not something that should be celebrated is just nonsense. Like we're going in reverse here. We're basically telling people like hard works, just everyone works hard. Well, no, some people work harder than others. How can you gauge who works harder than someone else? I don't know. So anyway, Zach Hyman, you're awesome. Keep it up, man. Happy for you. Like, I don't even like the Oilers, but I'm definitely on the side of Zach Hyman here for sure. Uh, no one asks how much money Sam Reinhardt's parents made when he scored 50 goals this year. That's a L take from the journalist. Clearly Hyman worked his ass off to get rid that. That's just it. Like, again, like he's, he was already in the NHL which yes, was in part due to the fact that he had parents that could afford to take him to hockey schools and all that stuff. But that's like, you know, that's like 80% of the league, 90% of the league, right? That's just the way it's set up. Like there's not, and here's the thing, like there's nothing you can do to change that. There's nothing you could do to make hockey cheaper. Rinks cost money to open and operate. Like how many of you, even in this chat here, play like, you know, beer league hockey. It's not cheap to play. It's not because some arena managers are making a ton of money. It's expensive to run an arena, to have Zambonis run, to change the ice, to do all these different things. Like it's no, it just economically, it's not a cheap sport. It has nothing to do with race or economic, you know, class. It's just arenas are tough to maintain the same way golf courses are tough to maintain. That's why golf courses are not cheap to, you know, play at in a lot of times, because there's a lot of money that goes into it. That's just basic economics that Andrew clearly misses here. And Andrew comes across as like, you know, just a bitter guy. So yeah, I, I had to point this out because everyone was talking about this yesterday. Hyman has an unfortunate last name. He's damn good though. I'm a fan. Seems like jealousy. That That's my thinking too. Again, you've got an out-of-work journalist who's attacking Zach Hyman. And there's actually another angle here, which I, I'll mention to you guys in the Discord. I don't want to mention it on here because it gets even deeper as far as why he's picking Hyman specifically. But remind me in the hockey chat, guys, um, if you want me to bring this up. But I think there's another reason, too, I singled out him as well. Sam Reinhardt's dad was a former NHL player. I'm trying to say this comically. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, I know exactly what you meant. Yeah, Reinhardt's parent, Paul Reinhardt played in the NHL. So that's his dad. So, of course, he had an advantage. Just like the Chuchucks had an advantage. Keith Chuchuk was a storied NHL player. His uh, th two sons, uh, well, three, I guess, right? Brady, um, uh, what's his name? Matthew. And then they have another one, right? Uh, who's the other to Chuck? I can't remember. But yeah, th those two also uh, play too. You'd see a Ginla play in the WHL. Very good player. It'd be cool to see Flames grab him in the draft. Yeah, so that's Jerome Ginla's uh, son, right? If I'm not mistaken. Um, I've not seen any highlights or anything from him yet, but I, I think it's something to keep an eye on. How about Shane Doan's kid playing last night for the Coyotes? Shane Doan, a storied, uh, um, sorry, not a storied, but a uh, you know a longtime Phoenix Coyotes, um, uh, Arizona Coyotes. Keep wanting to say Phoenix because they have the old uniforms, but uh, Arizona Coyotes uh, player, his son now playing for the team. That's pretty cool. I love seeing stuff like that. Like, I think it's so cool that like, you know, we have have these uh you know sons of former players that are that are you know doing well in the nhl like i think that's really cool to see jerome aginla is now an advisor in the front office that's slowly brewing yeah um is aginla is um so aginla's with the flames i thought he um wasn't he wasn't he uh is he not with kamloops the blazers doesn't he like own the team or something let me, let me double check that who owns the kamloops blazers i think aginla's an owner Oh, no, Tom Gillardi owns them. Well, that's interesting. Tom Gillardi also owns the... Um... Oh, no, Jerome McGinley is an owner. Okay, there we go. So it's a, it's a multiple owners as well. I was wondering that. I thought Jerome was just doing everything with that Kamloops Blazers, his former junior hockey team. But check this out. These are the owners of the Kamloops Blazers. Jerome McGinley, Mark Recchi, Shane Doan, Tom Gillardi, who owns the uh, the Dallas Stars, and then Daryl Sador, the former NHLer. That's cool. You know who owns the uh, Vancouver Giants, the junior hockey team? Does anyone know this in the chat? I'm going to Jeremy don't answer because I know you know the answer to this. But do you know, does anyone know who owns the Vancouver Giants, the uh, the junior hockey team? Does anyone know this? 
it's not someone NHL related, but it's someone pretty famous. I'll just I'll just leave it out there. I'll, I'll give you guys a couple minutes to see if you can figure out who that is. Uh, Jake's being dad is also a big member of the front office. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, James, if your son was a high end player at 15, which route would you want him to go? CHL, NCAA or Europe? Uh, they were talking about this yesterday on Kipper and Bourne on um, Nick Kiprios' show. Actually, Kipper's a guy I might be able to get on here too because Kipper and I used to work together. Just a side note. I would love to get Kipper on. He's a great dude. Um, but um, uh, they were talking about how the uh, NCAA and the USHL has really grown over the years and you're just seeing hockey becoming more popular in the States. Um, the answer to that question, by the way, is CHL. Like, I do think it's the best league. But the Americans, they're putting a lot of money into their programs. Like, look at how many Americans in the last dra couple drafts have, like, gone high because they've really been developing the players really well. It's something to keep an eye on. It would be different if Hyman lied about his past. Nothing worse than an athlete or a famous person acting like they had it hard through everyone and their own issues. Uh, and money is stress relief. Yeah, but I think even then it still doesn't capture what Zach Hyman has achieved. Like, if you wanted to talk, if the narrative, if the story was Zach Hyman made the NHL, that would be totally different. But the, that's not the story here. The story is that Zach Hyman is a 50 goal scorer. He was already in the NHL for years. It's the fact that he stuck with the NHL and learned how to, I guess, figure out how to be a better player and end up getting 50 goals. That's the story here. And that is hard work. That has nothing to do with his family's backing because that's like, like I said, 80% of the league has had some sort of financial advantage getting into hockey. Hockey camps are expensive. I'm putting my kid in the Vancouver Giants hockey camp this summer. It's not going to be cheap, but I'm doing it because my kid likes hockey and I want to see how far he can go with this. I, you know. It's pretty tough, though. Like, even now, my kid plays in a league with, uh, what, five and six-year-olds. There's six-year-old kids that, like, are, like, really good. And, like, I, they're already way ahead of my son. We all know that that journalist is going after Hyman. Be well, okay, you said it, not me. We'll, we'll talk, we can talk more about this in the, in the, in the chat. But if you, look at, if you look at his tweets, I'll just say they're not very favorable towards one particular religion. We'll just leave it at that. Don't, don't uh, son destroyed my jackets. Yeah, it's... Go see which side of the coin he's on in the Middle East thing. We'll just leave it on that. Again, let's officially listed as a special advisor to the Flames GM. Okay, that's awesome. Mark Cuban Trump. No, uh, Michael Buble, the, the singer. He actually owns the Vancouver Giants, which is kind of neat. He's like a part owner. And uh, sometimes they'll go to the games and stuff. And he, um, I think that's so cool. Like, if I was, like, famous in something else, like, if I was, like, like I had a lot of money, I'd totally do that. I'd totally buy, like, money. M like, if, if I had, like, unlimited funds, or, well, not unlimited. If I had unlimited funds, I'd buy the Canucks. That would be awesome. I would totally do that. But if I had like decent money, like if I was like a millionaire or something, actually I'd have to be more than a millionaire to buy, you know, a junior team, but um, I would totally buy a junior franchise. Like just to have your name attached to that, that would be so much fun. I think to like run a hockey team. That would be cool. I uh, watched the Brennan uh, mental thing play KHL in Russia. Definitely think it'll be fun. Uh, playing KHL in Russia. I definitely think I'd be a fan of that ACA promotion, just like Russian promotion products that put on good show production. Watched a Brennan mental thing. I'm not sure what you're referring to there, Nick. I am playing senior hockey this coming year. Saskatchewan can't wait. I want to get back into hockey. Jeremy, I know if you're still in the chat here, I know you play in an adults league. I would love to. I kind of want to wait till my kids get a little bit older because right now, like obviously I have a lot of duties at night with my kids, um, but I, I want to get back into it. I miss it. I do miss playing hockey a lot. I think at the very least, I'm going to try and find like a floor hockey or ball hockey team to play um, soon, but um, I love playing hockey. Like. I would drop everything right now to go play a game of road hockey right now. I totally would. Like we had a couple goalies. Like it's just uh, so much fun. That's why I'm coaching ball hockey this year. Just so I can even get on the, get, get on the floor and just shoot some balls. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, guys, we've got about nine minutes left. I think we've covered pretty much everything. We went through all the games tonight and so many different things as well. Um, yeah. What, what else, what else we got as well? So um, yeah, let's, let's see what else we got as far as other questions here. Um, yeah, just keep them coming. I'm trying to think of any other like news that's going on in the NHL right now. Do a quick Google search, see if we got some stuff. Um, ba, 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 ba. yeah, the Preds, that's been sort of the big story. They've been on, oh, what's the, yeah, let me, let me look at the Preds' uh, Preds' record right now. Let's go back to the NHL standings. So the Predators, yeah, 8, 0, oh, and 2, but I, even before that, I wonder if they have their, uh, their listed games here. Where's the results schedule game schedule for the Predators? I went to a Predators game a couple years ago. Really, really, really fun. They have a really good fan base. So if we go back to February, let's go, let's go look at where this win streak started. So back on February 15th, this is last month, they lose to 
Um, Dallas, 9-2. They lose to the Devils. So they had back-to-back losses February 13th to February 15th. Since then, the Blues, 5-2. Vegas, 5-3. LA, 4-1. And granted, Vegas and LA are good teams. Sharks, 4-1. Ducks, 4-2. Ottawa, 4-1. Wild, 6-1. And it continues all through March. They haven't even lost in March, right? Oh, they lost an OT, but they still still got a point there. Uh, yeah, again, they, they're still picking up points here. Like, this is incredible. And they're beating some good teams like the Avalanche. You beat the Avalanche 5-1. It's a really good win for them. So, yeah, I'm at the point now where, like, initially I was like, big deal. The, the, you know, the Predators are going in some heater. Big deal. I, I'm not worried about them. I am worried about them. I don't want the Canucks to play them in the playoffs. Um, I think it's going to end up being Vegas and the Canucks, which, you know, they're going to bring Mark Stone off IR, and it's it's going to be a tough series. But at least Vancouver's played Vegas well this year. I, I don't want to play the Kings, and I don't want to play the Predators. I think those are the two teams I do not want the Canucks to play in the playoffs. Everyone else, though, I mean, whatever. Like, even Dallas, I'm not that scared of Dallas. They, they should be okay. Uh, what do you think about the talk of increasing the playoffs to 20 teams? I hate it. Yeah, I, I think it should mean a little bit more. I mean, I don't mind, like, the... Um, I don't mind, like, what, what did they do in the NBA? They do that, like, one-game elimination series to get in. I wouldn't mind something like that if the points were close, but... Um, I like the playoffs the way they are. I like, like, some people don't like this, but I like the fact that the Panthers could knock off the Bruins last year having such few points. Like, I think that's very interesting. So I'm, I'm all there for that format. I think that's cool. If you had to bet $500 of your own money one on one team in the East and one team in the West to win the cup, who would you choose? Ooh. Okay. Great question. East. East, I'm going to go to the Panthers. I think, I think they've, they've made the right adjustments to go over the top this year. Like they got some veteran experience in there. I think the goaltending will hold up. I'll go Panthers in the East. The other choice I would think is, is maybe the Rangers Bruins too. Bruins have got good goaltending. I'll, I'll go Panthers there. I don't think the hurricanes will do it. The West. I think I've said this before, but I think I'm going Winnipeg. They're just too dangerous. They've got They got everything. They got good defensemen, good forwards. They got a great goaltender. I think the jets are a safe bet or Yeah, the Jets or I'm tempted to say the Avalanche, but I still got some questions about that goaltending. And Dallas, same thing. Like Ottinger hasn't looked so good either. I can't go the Canucks. I can't. Unfortunately, I can't. Like because this is like a new. This is new for them being in the playoffs. Like that, they're they're kind of a newbie team coming in. So I, I can't rely on them just you know having that experience. Like I, this is sort of how I think the playoffs are going to play out for the Canucks. If I have to be honest, like regardless of who they play in the first round. I think whoever they play, like I would not, and and I'm not trying to be pessimistic. I'm a realist. I'm actually saying this so this doesn't happen. This is like one of those things I'm putting out in the universe and I hope the opposite happens. I kind of feel like the Canucks will go out in the first round, regardless of who they play, but it'll be one of those things where it's like they learn from that experience and then next season they'll play really well, even though next team's team could look a lot different because they have a lot of UFAs, but I just have this feeling that like the Canucks will like not go all the way this year, but they'll learn a lot. And then the years to come, they'll be like a force. I can see that happening, but I hope I'm wrong. I hope the Canucks go on like some crazy Cinderella run and Demko's on his head. And like, you get like guys like Lindholm stepping up and Dakota Josh. Cause remember that's another thing. The Canucks have been missing Dakota Joshua a lot of the season too. They've been missing Carson Soucy a lot of the season and they still have been able to pick up these games. I think they've got enough depth. I think, uh, yeah, their defense is good. Um, I hope the Canucks go all the way. I want to see a Stanley Cup in my lifetime. I'm not that old, but I just, I want to see it. I want to know what other cities get to experience when they see their team win at all. So I haven't had the chance to do that. Would you rather go back to one to eight in conference instead of divisional play? No, I like the divisional play. I'm normally not a big conspiracy theory guy, but I just have a weird feeling that the NHL is going to rig the draft again for Chicago. I hope not. Honestly, I'd be so pissed off if they get Celebrini. Like that's like, especially after what happened. Like let, let's, let's, we might as well quickly talk about this. The Blackhawks have one of the worst scandals in NHL history with that whole thing with Chris Beach or Kyle Beach. And uh, and and they they still get to draft Connor Bedard first overall, which is bullshit. It, it totally was because the Coyotes, they did like tampering with their draft picks and they had draft picks taken away. That's not as bad as like a, like covering up a sexual assault. That's way worse. And then how about the New Jersey Devils? They did that whole signing with Kovalchuk and uh, Ilya Kovalchuk, if you remember from years ago. And then they got penalized, too. Uh, how about the Canucks having the Luongo contract? They get penalized via the cap for signing that contract, even though it was legal at the time. So that's the stuff I don't like. Like I know Chicago is a big market for them. And obviously like, you know, we see it in the NBA and other franchises where they certainly favor certain teams as far as getting good, good breaks. But yeah, I'll be pissed if Celebrini goes to the Blackhawks. That's stupid. They, they shouldn't just reward a team for like, like, I think there should be a rule. Let me know what you guys think of this. I, I'd love to hear your take on this as we're closing things out. 
I would like them to do a rule that if you get the first overall pick, you can't get the first overall pick again for the next like five years because the Canucks have never gotten first overall. That's one of the reasons I don't like the Oilers. How many first overall picks have the Oilers had? Taylor Hall, McDavid, um, uh, Nugent Hopkins was, I think, first overall. Uh, Nail Yakupov, which didn't work out. You know what I mean? Just seems like every time there's an original six team on the verge of collapsing, they get a first overall pick. I agree. Super annoying. Super, super, super annoying. Couldn't say that more. So, totally agree with that. All right, let's get to more questions in, everyone. Let's see what you got. Um, yeah. Let's see uh, let's see what we got going on here as we're uh, wrapping the show up. Again, appreciate all you guys tuning in. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I want that rule, James. My Blue Jackets always get screwed. Yeah, the, and I honestly would like to see that. I mean, the Blue uh, Blue Jackets have had a first overall. Wasn't Rick Nash first overall, or was he second? What was the what was Rick Nash in his draft year? And they made some bad drafting too. But I agree. Like Canucks have never drafted first overall as an example. Yeah, he was first overall in two thousand two. Yeah, like the Oilers should not get a bunch of first overall picks. The Rangers, they're another team that I think. And no offense, Ghost. I like because I like the Rangers, but they they've also had a couple first overall picks. Um. Who else? New Jersey, I feel like they've always gotten to pick high. They should just do it based off, like... They almost should do it based off, like, how the team has performed, like, over the last couple seasons. Because, like, if you look at, like, Vancouver prior to this year, they were one of the teams that kept, you know, had significantly low picks. Like, let's let's spice this up a little bit. Quit giving it to teams that, that don't need it. Great stream. I'll definitely make sure I catch these from now on. Oh, I appreciate that, Billy. Thank you. Nash is the only first overall pick in the franchise history. That's when we were in our inaugural season. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, so they're they're not exactly the the full example there, but um, yeah, you're, you're kind of right about that there. Uh, all right, guys, we got one minute left. Let's get there. I sympathize with your play to the lottery luck, but I don't know about that rule. What that a team shouldn't get a first overall pick if if they well no, but then like because the whole issue is they don't want teams tanking. I understand that like that it shouldn't necessarily be based off that, but I don't think you should just automatically get a first overall pick because in hockey compared to other sports, like a first overall pick really can change your franchise. Like McDavid will change the Blackhawks. You could look at other, um, you know, top picks over the years. They're not necessarily franchise altering. It's a bit different than it is in other sports. Are the teams that don't make the playoffs always like, well, shit, there's the go the season defeated feeling. Yes, especially when they're mathematically out. Of course, they're looking more forward to golfing. So there we go. All right. Um, that's it for the stream today, guys. Uh, really appreciate you tuning in. I should be here next week. Um, I'm going to be in Vegas, like I said, going to the Canucks Golden Knights game. I'll, I'll do a whole recap of that and let you know how my time is. Maybe I'll maybe I'll film some stuff, too. Maybe I'll get like a behind the scenes of, of the Knights game because it's it is such a fun time going to the Golden Knights. I, I can't say that enough. So um, that that's uh, that that's that's a lot of fun. I'll uh, I'll talk about that next week. So I'm going to try and get that done for next week. Like I said, do a stream here. If not, it might be a little bit later, but I'm not I'm basically not booking anything like next week because I'm off Monday to Wednesday next week. So I'm going to do that. And then the week after I won't be doing a show because I'll be covering UFC 300. So again, hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Tell your friends. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. I will see you next Wednesday, hopefully. I'll let you know either way on the community tab. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon.